Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today we have the Dell Inspiron 11 3147, which is part of the 3000 series line that Dell made about the year 2014. I want to start off by saying I, I want to like this machine. However, there is one glaring problem that I cannot seem to solve, and it seems to be one that is not uncommon with these is that the touch display doesn't seem to want to work for me. And I have tried pretty much every troubleshooting method that you would think would normally be acceptable to, you know, sort this thing out, and it does not touch. There is no HID compliant driver in the device manager. Windows does not detect it as a touch display. I'm reading some rumors that it has to do with a BIOS version, anything above A09, and this is running A12. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it's relevant, but the bottom line is I've tried everything that I can possibly think of to get this thing to use its touch screen, and unfortunately it does not work. So if you do find one of these with a touch screen that does work, great. And if you don't, don't be surprised. Now let's get back to the specs of this particular unit. So this is actually a really neat form factor. We are talking about a really thin and pretty compact device uh, that has pretty decent port selection considering the year that this was made. And then of course it was designed to be a touch tablet. And oddly enough, screen rotation works just fine, but touch does not even with this uh, display moved. And of course the trackpad doesn't shut off on the back end which leads me to believe that there is some driver issues going on there. Oddly enough, the Windows button does work. Now, you'll note that this display has some pretty thick bezels, like there's no getting around that. So this is an 11.6 inch display that is 1366 by 768. They crammed it in a device that's about 2.99 pounds. And that's actually pretty manageable for the size. The display, however, has scan lines that I have not seen on a display of that resolution and size in a good long while. And when I look at my ThinkPad X220, I don't notice them anywhere near as badly as I do on this device. I'm not too sure why, maybe that is also a driver issue, but I can like count the pixels here on the Windows logo. That might seem like a whole bunch of nitpicking, but there's actually a lot to like about this. So even for a device of this era, it actually does have one USB 3.0 port. So we may as well talk about the ports now. On the left-hand side, we've got power, HDMI, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, headphone microphone combo jack, and the left speaker, which is side firing, not downward firing. And then on the right-hand side, we have the power button, the volume rocker, the right speaker, another USB 2.0 port, an SD card reader, and a Kensington lock slot. And that is it for your ports. You do have a 720p web camera sitting up there at the top, and it is pretty acceptable. In terms of specifications, this came essentially in two models, the Pentium N3530, which is a very battery conscious CPU. The other CPU configuration that you can sometimes find these in is a Celeron dual core, which is an N2830. So this is giving me a runtime of about five to six hours and I haven't adjusted Wi-Fi or brightness or anything like that. And that's pretty much on par with what these were getting when they were brand new at eight hours. These all pretty much came from the factory with four gigabytes of DDR3, 1333 megahertz RAM, Dell Wireless 1707, 802.11 BGN. So 2.4 gigahertz, yes, five gigahertz, no and then Bluetooth 4.0 low energy. All of that's being driven by a 43 watt hour battery. And this one is actually in very good health. Now we're up to eight hours idling there on Wi-Fi, which is pretty excellent. And that's why I wanna love this thing. It's compact, it has good battery life. It's not super fast, but the screen is fairly bright. It's compact, you've got that 360 hinge. If the touch screen worked, I would be like, yes, this is such a great used device. So hopefully if you can find one, you will have a good experience with it. They were successful in what they wanted to do. Their goal was to make a all day battery inexpensive convertible, and they did it. And I think this is actually really well executed. These still hold their value online from what I've seen. So on eBay, you're gonna average a retail price of one of these at 200 US dollars. 
And that's kind of fair. It's higher than what you might see for some used laptops, but if you think about what you're getting, this is a pretty attractive used little machine, again, so long as the touchscreen works, for the person on the go that doesn't really need a whole lot. Like this thing is just adorably thin. It doesn't look as out of date as one might think. It's got some pretty timeless styling on the case which, you know, is plastic, but in this case, this is plastic done right. It feels good. The only thing that I would nitpick about is the trackpad. Its reaction time is not super great. You can adjust that in software. No gestures for Windows 10, unfortunately. And your left and right click are very, very soft, very low travel, and very spongy. And I'm sure that wouldn't be a problem. Well, you know what I was gonna say. It's all about that uh, touch screen up there. I'm gonna quickly show you what's on the inside of this, do a little bit of a startup, and then we'll have ourselves some conclusions. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start by removing all the screws on the bottom case, and then we will open it up and see what's inside. Okay, and with all the screws removed, it should be a simple matter of just coaxing this bottom panel out. Okay, and here we are, the inside. And you know what? This is pretty straightforward. We've got a single RAM slot here. We have a two and a half inch drive bay hanging out over here. We do have our Wi-Fi card, our CMOS battery, which is really nice because it's just a standard coin cell that you could replace off the shelf at pretty much any watch shop. You have the very large uh, 43 watt hour battery, the side firing speakers with actually considerably large chambers given the size of the device. And then you've got your main board with a very tiny cooler and it's rearward firing. So all the heat's gonna go straight out the back. So realistically, if you need to service this or swap out parts, it's a pretty trivial affair. There's not a whole lot that you really need to uh, be super careful of or worry about. I would imagine that replacing the keyboard is not super fun. You'd probably have to take everything out. But looking at the design of this, I've seen worse machines to tear down than this. So we're gonna go ahead and quickly put this back together and uh, do a little bit of a boot test. I do believe it is running a mechanical hard drive in this guy, so it might be a little on the slow side. Pentium N doesn't help either. But you know what, once it's in there, it's you know, it's adequate. All right, now that we have the device back together, let's go ahead and see how quickly it turns on from cold. All right, and we are in. So it's not gonna win any speed awards, but it's far from the worst thing I've ever tested on this channel. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the market for a inexpensive used two-in-one that quite frankly has very good battery life, performance is not a really, really big thing. This is an easy recommendation. If you can find one in good shape and the touchscreen still works, again, I'm not 100% sure what's causing the issue on mine to not be detected whatsoever. If you do know anything about that or have some solutions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I've tried an awful lot of things, but maybe you know something about this model that I don't. That's very likely. 200 US dollars is about what they're averaging for on eBay. If you want to link to a few listings, again, uh, look in the description for the information on that. And if you enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more and be notified as soon as the videos are released, I am going to encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so the next time I feature a two-in-one that is worth your time and worth your money on the used market, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.